Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to our Zhuge Liang's Northern Expedition lore series as we continue with episode 3, titled Initial Success. Now in our last episode, we laid out Zhuge Liang's attack plan for the first Northern Expedition, and in the initial phase of the campaign, everything proceeded according to plan, as Zhao Yun and Deng Zhi's diversionary force successfully encamped inside the Baoxie Path, drawing Cao Zhen's main force to respond. Meanwhile, Zhuge Liang's main attack force took the western Mount Qi path and started to march towards the Tiantui commandery. Now this path is named the Mount Qi path because right before it exit into the Tiantui commandery, it passes through a small mountain called Mount Qi, where the Wei forces had constructed a mountain fortress to act as an outpost against Shu Han aggression. Now Mount Qi castle is not a large structure and could only house a few thousand troops inside. But it was one of the three main fortification projects ordered by Cao Cao, with the other two being Hefei Castle in the east and Fan Castle in the Jin province. But unlike the two other fortifications, Mount Qi Castle was not connected to any major waterways that could bring in additional supplies and reinforcements. Nor was it close to any way reserve garrisons, as its main task was to act as an advanced scouting outpost for the western commanderies in the Yong province. With roughly a thousand troops inside, Mount Qi Castle was too small to stop any attacking army outright. But it was also just large enough that you can't simply ignore it, as you had to at least divert a sizable force to try to siege it or else the troops inside could easily form raiding parties to harass any supply lines that tried to move through this area once the main army moved on. Now at first, Zhuge Liang demanded the troop inside to surrender, but under the leadership of the garrison commander Gao Gong, Mount Qi Castle refused, as Zhuge Liang had to waste valuable time here to set up a proper siege, before having the main army bypass Mount Qi Castle to take the Nan'an, and the Tianshui commanderies to the north. But these few extra days spent at Mount Qi Castle will actually play a pivotal role in regards to the end result of this entire campaign, as it bought the Wei forces precisely enough time to respond. You see, the main reason Zhuge Liang decided to launch the first northern expedition during January of 228, during this freezing cold winter, was not because it would make the campaign any easier, but rather he was trying to attack the western commanderies of the Yong province when its prefect, Guo Huai, would be away and back in Chang'an for the Chinese New Year holidays. For those who might have forgotten, Guo Huai had been serving in the west ever since Xia Houyuan was the general of the west. Then when Xia Houyuan was slain during the Hanzhong campaign, it was Guo Huai who had assumed the role of the interim general of the west, as he was able to contain Liu Bei on the southern banks of the Han River to buy enough time for Cao Cao's main army to arrive into Hanzhong. Although eventually the post of the general of the west would go to Xia Hou Mao, mainly due to nepotism, as Xia Hou Mao and Cao Pi were childhood friends and in-laws, Guo Huai was still given the important post as the prefect of the Yong province. And aside from Cao Zhen, Guo Huai probably was the most talented general on the Western Front for Wei. Which is why Zhuge Liang wanted to attack when he should be back in Chang'an to spend the holidays with his family and to present his annual reports to Xia Hou Mao, as it was the prefix's job to inspect the commanderies under his province during the month of August and then report his findings back to the nearby capital at the end of the year. However, precisely because Guo Huai was a astute strategist, Zhuge Liang's presence in Hanzhong during the prior year and Meng Da's rebellion in Shangyong alerted him to the possibility of an imminent attack on the often neglected Western Front. So instead of returning to Chang'an during the winter of 227, Guo Huai decided to make another inspection round instead. So when Zhuge Liang's army had shown up at Mount Qi Castle, Guo Huai was actually on the borders of the Nan'an and Tianshui commandery in a small town called Luomen, 
not far away from Zhuge Liang's main army. And knowing that he did not have many troops under his command out west as the western commanderies were severely undermanned, he immediately mustered up as many troops as he could from these two nearby commanderies as he would race this small army of his immediately for the fortification at Shangbeng. Now this was no easy task as news of Zhuge Liang's arrival out west immediately spurred three of the five Yong province commanderies to surrender as these administrators of the Nan'an, Tianshui, and Anding commanderies all decided to flee east towards Chang'an, leaving the commandery behind. And this meant that the Longxi commandery, which was the westernmost commandery, and the Guangwei commandery, which was just due east of Shangbang, were the only two commanderies left with garrisons to actively resist Zhuge Liang's forces. And the only reason why Longxi didn't surrender was because they were so far out west that they knew they didn't have the time to flee east. Therefore, the local administrator, whose name was Yu Chu, told his officers that they now had two options. First, they can defend their commandery, and if reinforcement from Wei comes and beat back the Shu Han army, then they would all be heroes. However, if the Shu Han army is able to cut off the mountain passes on the Lone Mountain Range to the north, and stop future Wei reinforcements, then at that time, he was willing to allow his officers to tie him up and present him as a gift to the Shu Han army in order to buy themselves a career under Shu Han rule. And seeing that they had nothing to lose in either scenarios, the officers at Longxi agreed to help Yu Chu defend the Longxi commandery. And at this time, Yu Chu also reached out to Zhuge Liang and stated the same thing, as he explained that Longxi is irrelevant in the grand scheme of this campaign, as it's too far out west. And if Zhuge Liang can't stop Wei reinforcements, then there was no way that Zhuge Liang could hold on to Longxi. Yet if Zhuge Liang can stop the Wei reinforcements, then of course Longxi would surrender naturally. Therefore, why waste time and resources to siege Longxi? when they could just leave a small force behind to cut them off from attacking Zhuge Liang in the rear. Of course, this was a very logical and correct analysis, and Zhuge Liang concurred as he ended up only sending a small force to hold the path leading to Longxi, as Zhuge Liang knew that the main fight would be at the Lone Mountain Ranges to the north, as that was the only place where Wei could send reinforcements into the Yong province. But with Mount Ti Castle and now Shangbang both acting as pests behind his line, Zhuge Liang no longer had enough manpower or time to plug up the four different mountain crossings on the low mountain range shown here. And with no intel on which of these mountain ranges that the Wei reinforcements might take, Zhuge Liang had to shift his defense farther south to the crossroads at Jieting where all four of these mountain passes would converge on their way towards Shangbang, as the Wei reinforcement's main goal would be to link up with Guo Huai's forces in the Yong province before having a showdown with Zhuge Liang's main army. So with Shangbang being the place where the future of the Yong province will be determined, Zhuge Liang could not personally head to Jieting to set up the crucial defensive position needed to stop the Wei reinforcements, as he had to remain behind at Shangbang to deal with Guo Huai, who was a much larger threat. Therefore, this most critical decision of the first northern expedition needed to be made, as Zhuge Liang now had to decide which general is going to defend Jieting in order to buy the main army enough time to siege down both Mount Ti Castle and Shangbang, as once these two outposts were taken out, then Zhuge Liang can safely move the majority of his forces to rejoin the group at Jieting, as then they would work to push back the Wei reinforcement. And that would honestly be an easy task at that point, as Zhuge Liang's northern expedition army vastly outnumbered anything Wei could muster up in such a short period of time out west, 
And that reinforcement army would have already marched an incredible amount of distance through the frigid cold and the mountainous terrains of the low mountain ranges to reach Jieting. So the only question left is, who should be sent to stall the Wei reinforcement at Jieting? And with this question posed, we're going to be ending our episode here, as we'll come back next time to cover the selection process, as well as Wei's reinforcement plan to counter this first northern expedition. So hopefully you have enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!